this lecture, we're going to start talking about the moisture variables of the atmosphere, how we describe how much water vapor is in the air. Um, so you've already seen the mixing ratio, which is the mass of the vapor divided by the mass of the dry air. And using the, for the ideal gas law, you could transform that into the density of the vapor, the density of the dry, uh, of these alternative forms. Depending upon the specific problem that you're dealing with, any one of these forms of the equation might be useful to you. I'd like to now introduce three other uh, moisture variables. Uh, we'll start with Q, um, not to be confused with the Q in uh, the first law of thermodynamics, but this is known as the specific humidity, and it's the mass of the vapor divided by the mass of the dry plus the mass of the vapor. So it's a slight modification of the mixing ratio. Uh, and alternatively, you end up with the density of the vapor over the density of the dry plus the density of the vapor, or the vapor pressure over the total pressure, which is the uh, pressure of the dry plus the uh, water vapor pressure. I'd like to also introduce the concept of the dew point temperature, um, and clearly define the dew point temperature is the temperature to which an air parcel must be cooled at constant pressure to reach saturation. So you grab an air parcel, you stick it in a refrigerator, you cool it down at constant pressure, and the dew point is defined as the temperature at which a cloud will form in that chamber. Because a cloud will form when the relative humidity or reaches 100% or the air becomes completely saturated. Um, you're probably very familiar with the concept of relative humidity which is essentially a variable that is telling you how close you are to saturation. 0% uh, relative humidity means that you have a dry air parcel. A 100% relative humidity means that you're completely saturated and no more water vapor can exist in the vapor form without condensing. Uh, so the mathematical definition of the relative humidity is the actual vapor pressure divided by the saturation vapor pressure which represents the maximum amount of molecules of water vapor that can exist in the atmosphere at a given temperature, times 100 to turn it into a percent. Or alternatively, uh, you could define this as the mixing ratio divided by the saturation mixing ratio, which once again represents the maximum amount of water vapor that can exist in the atmosphere uh, <clears throat> at a given pressure and temperature. So the mixing ratio, the saturation mixing ratio is epsilon, which is 0.622, times the water vapor, um, the saturation vapor pressure divided by PT minus E sub S, which is approximately equal to epsilon times the saturation uh, vapor pressure divided by the total pressure. So, one of the things that we want to do now is we want to be able to calculate what the saturation vapor pressure is as a function of temperature. So over here in the laboratory, we've done experiments to say, you know, if we raise the temperature over a plane surface of pure water, um, as the temperature goes up, the uh, water molecules, the water vapor pressure in the atmosphere uh, above that plane surface of pure water increases exponentially. And we've seen that in the laboratory. And so what we want to do is develop a, an equation that describes this function uh, so that we can have a functional form for the saturation vapor pressure as a function of temperature. And in order to do that, we're going to use the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Uh, now, in order to derive the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, which we'll do in a later thermodynamics class, we would have to introduce the concept of entropy. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now. We're going to start with the Clausius-Clapeyron equation and then move forward. Uh, the Clausius-Clapeyron equation basically says that the slope of this line uh, is equal to the latent heat of vaporization divided by temperature times the difference between the specific volume of the vapor and the specific volume of the liquid. And you'll note, of course, that the specific volume of the vapor is much greater uh, for a, a unit mass than the specific volume of the liquid. Uh, so in this case, 
we have the specific volume of the vapor and the liquid, and the specific volume of the vapor is much, much greater than the specific volume of the liquid. So this allows us to make an assumption here and simplify the clausius clapeyron equation to DES over DT is equal to the latent heat of vaporization times temperature over alpha V. But recall that the specific uh, volume of water vapor is equal to R sub V times T over this, uh, in this case, the saturation vapor pressure. We can basically take that, substitute it into this equation, and you'll end up with DES over DT is equal to the latent heat of vaporization times the saturation uh, vapor pressure over R sub V times T squared. You need to bring uh, like terms on either side. You'll get DES over E sub S um, and LV over RV, DT over T squared. And we'll integrate both of these from some reference temperature where we have a reference uh, saturation vapor pressure to some temperature that's uh, greater or less than that reference value and we'll be able to get the, the actual uh, vapor pressure at that temperature. So the integral of the left hand side is now trivial for you. It's the natural log of E sub S of T over E sub S of T naught. Um, and then the right hand side, we, in order to do this, we have to assume that the latent heat of vaporization is constant. And we'll note that the latent heat of vaporization varies by plus or minus 6% over the temperature range of minus 30 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So what we're doing is we're introducing a significant um, inaccuracy into this equation by solving it analytically. Uh, but by doing that, we can just simplify the math and we'll end up with the integral of t to the minus 2 dt. The integral of this is going to be t to the minus 1. Um, so the evaluation is the natural log of E sub S of T over E sub S of T naught is equal to minus the latent heat of vaporization over R sub B times 1 over T minus 1 over T naught. Uh, and then to solve for E S of T, we take the exponent of both sides. And you'll end up with E sub S of T is equal to E sub S of T naught times the exponent of the latent heat of vaporization over the um, R sub B times 1 over t naught minus 1 over t. We, you'll notice that these are in different order than they are here because we distributed the minus sign uh, inside the exponential. So this equation, which comes from the clausius clapeyron equation, has a significant uh, inaccuracy built into it, uh, but it gives you the functional form for how the water vapor pressure changes with temperature. And that's reflected over here as the uh, clausius uh, clapeyron uh, equation that translated into the saturation vapor pressure as a function of temperature. And in this case, the temperature is in degrees Kelvin. But in the laboratory setting, they have actually measured this at multiple locations, at multiple times and multiple temperatures, and have come up with an empirical uh, relationship um, based upon actual laboratory data that's much more accurate than that which comes from the clausius clapeyron equation. And this fit to this laboratory data is E sub S of T is equal to the vapor pressure at T naught, which is usually taken as zero degrees Celsius. So the vapor water vapor saturation water vapor pressure at zero degrees Celsius is 6.112 hectopascals. That's where that 6.112 comes from. Um, times the exponent of 17.67 divided by 243.5 plus temperature, and in this uh, empirical fit for this uh, function, the temperature must be in degrees Celsius. It's the only time this entire semester where you're going to be required to input a temperature in degrees Celsius into a formula, and so that's something that you need to do. So why use this equation over this one? This e empirical fit is accurate within 0.5% uh, throughout the temperature range of minus 40 to positive 40 uh, degrees Celsius. And this equation, which comes from the clausius clapeyron equation, is only good within about uh, plus or minus, uh, you know, point uh, plus or minus 5% over that same range. So we have moisture variables, 
and we now have a way to actually calculate the relative humidity because we have a way to figure out what the saturation vapor pressure is as a function of temperature.